We back, and I'm, I'm. We see we snacking. I'm chewing. He he drinking shit. Right. Shout out to Better Made, man. That's what I'm munching on. Oh, but man. yeah, man. Detroit's on. You know what That's man? it. Detroit and Uncle Ray's too. Oh yeah. To get oh, them. Yeah. So, uh, legendary Detroit mentality. Arthur Lucada is here holding it down with us, man. Talking about his new book. He just dropped. You know what I mean? So, uh, why, why? Did you title it Legendary Detroit Mentality? What was the uh, the, the connection to the title, to the book, as uh, the story pertains to the title? Well, um, Legendary was the name of the record label that I started back in the 90s. And that's what the book is really based on. It's based on the record label that I started uh, back in the 90s. Um, Detroit Mentality is pretty much the direction that the book goes in to kind of express just the you know my upbringing you know and the, and people can take it um, negatively or positively because there are different uh, areas of that Detroit mentality you, you know you know what I'm saying Mark you know I mean it could be the drive that we have to succeed and make it by any means necessary. Or sometimes, you know, you got people out here, you know, they got that sense of entitlement, you know. They see somebody else working for something, they feel like they want to jump on that and make that they meal ticket, you know. That's a Detroit mentality, you know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that happens in every other city, but right. this is, you know, I, I'm from Detroit, so this is all I know. So, you know, but at the same time, you know, that that's Detroit mentality it describes what I know. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Whether you like it or not. Alright, so we have uh, one through some of the chapters in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, names of the chapters. First off, starting off the golden era. The golden era. Okay. What, 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 give me a, give me a, uh, you know, a description of what's going on in, in, in that chapter or what it's about. Okay, I'll go, I'll go through it briefly. Uh, the golden era is just basically, uh, I named that after uh, that 1986, 87, 88, 89 era uh, right. Where some of the greatest hip hop artists uh, Came out ever. back then Yeah, ever uh, KRS-One, Public Enemy, EPMD You know, that type of stuff um, Basically, that was the year that um, I broke out as a rap artist in Detroit you know, not saying I was famous or something, but right. that was the year that I came into my own and battle rapping and um, going to the studio and things like that. So uh, that's my roots was during that year. I was very, very influenced by those cats back then in the golden era. Right. So that's basically what that chapter is about. Skipping down, skipping down mm -hmm. to another one. Uh, we got Detroitology. Detroitology. You know what? That's one of my favorite chapters because I kind of go off on a different tangent. Um, Detroitology, um, it, it kind of breaks down the historical aspect of the culture of Detroit and that Detroit mentality. So when you read Detroit um, Detroitology, it, I kind of start off and uh, explain that in order for you to understand the culture or the mentality of Detroiters, you have to understand our history. And I go back to the 30s and 40s when a lot of African Americans, blacks, migrated from the South to Detroit. Um, I go back to the uh, the uh, history of the auto industry in Detroit and the impact that it had. The Detroit, the uh, 67 riots. Right. Um, I go back to the Coleman Young era, the Motown era. Of course, I can't forget that. Uh, the Im impact that Motown had on, on Detroit. Uh, the Coleman Young era, you know, the great Coleman Young. Um, the Earl Flynn's, the BK's, um, the YBI's in the 80s. Uh, you know, the Curry Boys, the <coughs> Chambers, you know, things like that, best friends. Uh, awesome Dre. Uh, Detroit Most Wanted, all of that stuff, you know, in the 90s. So that's basically, you know, it, it, it gives a good history of Detroit and the hip-hop culture that came about from it. 
Right, right, right. Speaking of speaking of culture, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, with this book being basically a depiction of what went on uh, at a certain time frame, you know, certain time frame of years, mm-hmm. time span rather. Right. Uh, if you were to publish a book about today and right now. What would be the storyline? What would it be about? What, is, what what do you see in your eyes today that is worth you know you you putting together a piece about? Are we talking? Are we referring to hip hop or are we? No, we just just, just, just the culture. Period. Oh, I mean, culture, uh, period. I, I mean, you know, not 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 only the music, but you know, just uh, black culture. Period. Got you. Okay, it's it's two sides to everything, and uh, on one side. Um, of course, we know it's a lot going on. You know, the violence in the streets, uh, the uh, poor educational system. Uh, I definitely would write a book on that, uh, you know, uh, parentheseing those things um, and how it's affected the community, uh, the single parenting, the drug culture, all of those <laughs> things that have kind of taken us as black folks back so far. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the video games, the rap videos, and the rap culture, and things like that nowadays. But on the other hand, I'm not gonna uh, get down on this new generation so bad because at the same time, I'm so proud of these uh, kids nowadays that's standing up against police brutality. This is not just the adults that's doing this. This is a new uh, generation of revolutionary children who, yeah, really, to tell the truth, some of us Uncle Toms that made it through the 90s and the early 2000s, had our little Chrysler jobs and all this and that, we was too scared to speak out against stuff like that. That stuff been going on. But these kids nowadays, you know, they standing up and putting they putting their lives and their livelihoods on the line Mm -hmm. and i I, i'm so proud of them um i'm looking at the the kids in the um in the uh detroit public school system i mean that you know rats and mice and roaches in these schools man mold and mushrooms Mushrooms on the wall you know what i'm saying but these kids, I saw uh, King High School. The kids, uh, I saw on the news, they was out marching and protesting. We all need to be supporting these children, first and foremost. Um, Cast Tech, Renaissance, you know. I mean, more power to you children. I love y'all, you know. So that would be, if I if I was to write something um, in, on this new generation, I would definitely want to highlight it with... The, the revolutionary um, mind state that has evolved uh, in the last, I would say, four to five years with these children. You know? Right, right, right. Speaking of the children and current conditions that's going on in our, in our community, uh, or in different cities, mm-hmm. uh, particularly here in the Detroit area, Southeast Michigan area, um, Flint, Michigan has been the main story on a lot of news uh, casts within the last month or so. Right, uh, right. Uh, what is your position? How do you feel about what's going on in Flint right now? What do you what do you what do you feel about it? It's absolutely criminal. Okay, number one. Starting with um the governor, Rick Snyder, okay, it's absolutely criminal that the governor and those who are under his cabinet and those who are in um, different positions that supposedly were knowledgeable enough to um, that, that to curve that situation before it e- erupted into what it is now it's an explosive situation okay that's the that's the side right there it's absolutely criminal all of them should be going to in, going to jail and going to prison resigning and all of that stuff in regards to the um the people of flint we talking about no there's no end in sight to when they're going to be able to get drinkable and bathable water and people like you know like yourself i gotta commend you um mark i mean you know people like yourself and people in detroit 
uh, I, I, they're not getting enough credit. You know, not that you know we you we're know, doing Detroit, it we're doing it for the credit. Not at all. You know, Detroit has got big hearts. Uh, but I mean, there's so many people in Detroit that's going up there and and supporting and sending water up. It's people all over the nation. Uh, I heard Russell Simmons say on. Uh, the talk i think that's the name of that show today that he thinks that the governor in michigan should be in prison and he's supposed to be donating some money and all that type of stuff but you talking about legionnaires disease lead poisoning rashes on these babies you know you talking about people got to miss work because they constantly got to go and refill on water uh so people gonna lose out you know Unless a lot of them move, you know, this is a situation. Really I went to a elementary school in there. Mm hmm. Class split with second and third graders. Okay. Right on the edge of Flint. And uh, I forget the other name in the city, but it's right there on the edge of Flint. Okay. So half of these students had water, good water. Half of these students didn't. Some of these students go back and forth between houses with good water and bad water. See what I'm saying? Some of them, some of these kids have been in instances where they've been told to drink the water. Right. Some of them still bathe in the water to this day, but they have a time limit on how much how much time they can spend in the water. Wow. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Testimonies from the kids coming soon. Wow. And, it, and that's something that I it, I can't speak in depth on that because you know I'm getting it from directly. We're sitting up here getting it from you directly. You right, went right. up there and actually got a chance to uh, talk to the children, you know. And that's something that you know not many people are doing. Um, but that's it, it, it's 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 so criminal. I mean the. Um, United Nations need to be in on this, man. You know, if you ask me, because this is like a, this is a slow genocide. You know, yeah, that's it's, going it's on, definitely man. like it is the 2016 version of the Tuskegee experiment. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, you know, my thing is this, man. Um, you know, Hurricane Katrina was a horrible event, but. This particular situation is a man-made situation, and for it to be a man-made situation... Here's the thing. Here's the catch about that. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. FEMA. Yeah. What do you know about what they said about the situation? If I'm correct, um, they said that they wouldn't be able to do anything for them because because it was a man-made situation. There we have and it. That's, that's so if it's a man-made situation, who is the man that made it? Governor Snyder. Who's the man that made it? Well, well, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going I'm to call it a man-made situation. You know, so it, it, it's, you know, we do put it on Governor Snyder. He is the, the face of this situation. But it's a whole lot of other people that I mean they need to all be in that that pack cell together, you know, flat out. You know, I'm gonna be, I'm, you know, I'm gonna take it to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go on and go go real with it. Kwame Kilpatrick is doing 28 years right now, okay. For what though? You know, for I mean, you know, it, it, several nothing. Se several counts of in comparison to this shit things that nothing. were investigated, but yeah, in comparison to this, nothing. Okay, um, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not here to state my opinion on how I feel about Kwame Kilpatrick right now, but I will say this: mm -hmm. Rick Snyder, it, right now, he shouldn't even be able to stand in front of a camera right now. He should be watching this from from the county jail up near Flint right now, Genesee County or whatever, or wherever he's, you know, right. Let, I mean, it, it's 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 just absolutely criminal, you know. And it's it to me, there is um, there's always there's a difference, you know. When we talk about racism, media racism, I'm very big on that, you know. And I'm very um, I'm very careful when I call a person a racist. I'm very like I'm very careful when I call a person a drug addict. I'm very careful when I call a person a snitch. I'm very because these are incendiary incendiary uh, terms, 
So when you say something about somebody, you gotta have that real proof. And it is. I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, the media here in Michigan, people need to know all over the country, it, this is one of the most racist, most subtly racist um, media platforms in the country. And I guarantee you that if this was, uh, if this hadn't no gone nationwide, that the media wouldn't have gotten on top of this situation and they wouldn't be making a big deal out of Rick Snyder because a lot of the media here are supporters of Rick Snyder and the Republican Party here. There it is. So, there it is, man. And, and as long as that structure is in place, I don't believe we'll ever get down to the bottom of a lot of the issues that are caused by this guy. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's not possible. Absolutely. It's not going to happen. Exactly. It's not we, you know, because I believe there has been 11 petitions created. Right. To uh, recall or, or to impeach this Governor Snyder out of the right. office. Now, a lot of these, 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 these things, these, uh, these, these, uh, what did I just say? These petitions, petitions were created yeah. uh, out of context for some reason. They were created uh, wrong. Something somebody said, I can't, don't be, uh, quote me on the details, but uh, somebody was just telling me about this today. And, um, you know, I bring all of this up to say that after this year, mm-hmm. we won't be able to impede, we won't have the ability to remove him from office. Why is that? Again, I'll, I'll bring uh, Charles Bell in okay. and uh, talk to because he, he's the one that talked to me about it. state representative candidate Charles Bell okay. was telling me about how after so long, you know, he, it's too close to the end of his term, basically. Yeah. Well, I heard something else, too, in regards to the petitions. I, I you know, and I don't want to uh, misquote any information, but I heard that... Um, in regards to some of the petitions that were uh, signed uh, and passed around, that uh, it, they said that uh, there wasn't enough reasonable evidence to huh. impeach him or something like that through those petitions. That you know, and that's just my little, that's just me walking past my TV, getting ready for work, and you know, I'm hearing the news and. You know, and I think I heard something like that a couple of days ago or something. So I don't, you know, it's 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 still it's a sad situation, man. Um, man, it's Rick Snyder just really him and the people up under him. They shouldn't be able to work anywhere else. They shouldn't be. They just they shouldn't be free. You know, and this is really you know, um, I like to see the Senate hearings that's getting ready to uh, come up. In regards to this next month, um, I know Boy. Snyder is being called to in front of the Senate. You know, so I think that's going to make a big difference on some things too, though. Yeah, and um, hopefully we we'll see, man. But this state, this state, unfortunately, has a track record. Yeah, that we uh, don't seem to be on, on, we always seem to be on the short end of the stick of. Yeah. Yeah, <coughs> that's what I say about Michigan. Right. You know what I mean, we're gonna take a little break, man. We'll be right back. Author Lucada is in the building. Legendary Detroit mentality. We'll be right back. Warning. Now to the I come here tonight and plead with you. 